It's time for another episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show, a podcast where I connect you with thought leaders from across the globe, dig into some of my favorite topics like personal development, marketing, spirituality, and pretty much any other shiny object that happens to catch my attention. Today, my very special guest is Catherine Ranala, and we're going to be discussing her new book, Double for Your Trouble, Let God Turn Your Mess into a Miracle. Catherine, it is truly an honor to speak with you again. Welcome back to the show. It's a delight. Wonderful to be here. Thanks, Sean. And Catherine, I was looking in my old show notes from the last time we talked. I think it was in July of 2020. The audience has grown like crazy since we last talked. So we're going to go back to a question I asked the last time, and that is to have you share a bit of the Catherine Ronaldo origin story. So for somebody meeting you for the very first time, give them a little bit of context. What should they know about you? Oh, praise God. Well, I'm a, I'm a child of God, loved by Jesus, but I have been married to my husband for now. 31 years, and I have three beautiful children who I all adore. My eldest is now just married. My middle daughter works for me as my PA, and she's also an artist, amazing, uh, amazing artist. And my son is at home and uh, serving in the church, and we're just so grateful for what the Lord's done. I'm the senior leader of Glory City Church here in Brisbane, I also had the privilege of overseeing a network of churches in Australia and America. And uh, I, I am the founder and facilitator of the Australian Prophetic Council. And I love to travel and see souls get saved, love to see miracles. And God is truly moving. We, since December, we have genuinely been in revival. We had an extraordinary um, in, visitation from God in December where the fire of God came with so much power. A fireball actually hit me in a meet in in one of the meetings and the fear of God hit the room. And since that time we've seen an explosion in souls and numbers and miracles and the glory every week just getting so intense. So we're very, very excited about what the Lord's doing. Really believing for 2020 to 2022 to be a year of double, double, double for our trouble. Well, then we couldn't have picked a better time uh, for the book to release then. Uh, I'd love to hear just kind of a, a little bit of the story behind the book. So in terms of this message being on your heart, but also speak to kind of the divine timing. We were talking about this a little bit before we got into the interview. This is a book that I've been watching behind the scenes at Destiny Image, be on a schedule, be ready to release. And then it wasn't time and it wasn't time. And finally, now we're in the season when it comes out. So on the one hand, you know, internally there was delay in it getting to market, but at the same time, right now, as I look where we are in the world, it feels like God had a plan for it to come out now. Yes, I really believe uh, this is uh, this is a very special book to me. It's a really special message, and I believe it's the right timing. Um, you know, I've been reading the Book of Esther recently, and just in, the incredible turnaround that that book shows of how it got so bad and then God turned everything around for good. And I really believe that right now we are in that season where we can pivot to despair or we can pivot to hope. And God is inviting us to pivot to hope and wage war with the promises that for your former shame, pain and disgrace, he wants to give us double recompense. And, and I really believe that this book is timed to help and equip people to know what to do with all the mess, all the pain, all the sorrow, and not just sort of come through as a survivor, but actually take those things that have been, um, you know, the enemy is meant for evil and sow it in faith at the divine exchange table. Uh, and I, I truly believe that as we learn how to do that, we're going to see, and we are seeing, incredible turnarounds. And I want to have you explain that concept of the divine exchange table in a minute. But first, um, talk to, you know, I feel like it's one thing when we read God's promises, we're like, wow, God really wants to restore. And we go, okay, that's great. But like, what what's that faith step? There's there's It's one thing to read and believe, but I feel like so often there's an action step of really praying and pressing in and pursuing those promises. So how do we go from reading and understanding to actually like stepping into those things, starting to manifest, starting to happen? You know, I really believe that uh, prophecies, promises from God in the word are invitations waiting for our response. And when we learn how by faith to go, okay, God, you said it, and then ask him what is it that we're to do next? Like 
Elisha, when he received the double portion mantle, he picked it up and he struck the water. And in this book, I really explain to people what those faith steps can look like to, you know, yes, we've received everything pertaining to life and godliness, but what are we going to do with that in order to activate it? And I'm very much about activation and the practical, how we can practically put these promises to work by faith. And that's one of the things I I really always want to help people get a hold of, because a lot of us who uh, uh, express our faith, are part of the charismatic church, we have dreams, people pray things over us, they speak words, and we write all these things in our journal, and, and we can we can treasure those and have them squirreled away in the drawer of our desk. But until we actually step out and move in faith and really take that that step across the threshold to be like, I believe that God wants to move in this way. It actually this is actually something that could happen. Like there, there's there, there's a transition that happens when we actually enter into that place of belief and that it's real and God does want to do that. But that it's different than just knowing or treasuring. There, there's an action step. And like, I, I've had so many people talk about it at the end of their life. They're like, I had all these, these promises and these words, and I never quite saw them fulfilled. And when you ask, well, what did you like step out? Did you, what did you do? They'll be like, well, I didn't really do anything with them. And so if I can bring that across in, in any interview, I'm excited. Cause it's like, it's that, that faith action step where something gets activated and you start to step into it, move into it and it becomes a reality. Um, but again, if, if we don't know that or realize that we need to take that action, we're, we're leaving so much on the table. Because faith without works is dead. And that's true. But we wage war with the prophetic words spoken over us, you know, the Bible tells us. And so for me, when I, particularly with regard to double for your trouble, in, I've learned from an, a young age um, in ministry that, I, you know, I don't want to waste a drop of, the tears, the pain. I've been through lots and lots of painful situations in my life and um, I've watched as God has turned it around. You know, I grew up and was uh, an abuse victim and all sorts of things and and people can just sort of write write you off and go, oh, that's terrible, she's a victim. Or you could use that victimhood to gain sympathy, to try and have some sort of identity. Or you can take the pain, you can take what the enemy meant for evil and sow it in faith. I remember when we um, first really stepped out in ministry, someone wrote, someone made a video about me that was just nasty. It was, he didn't even know me, someone from America, never met me, but he wrote, made it some video about how she seems like a nice lady, but she's a woman. And, um, I was so upset. I'm like, Tom, there's a man making you say these nasty things. He said, stop watching it. Let's sow it. And so we, by faith, both of us, we we went, okay, we've been dishonored in the media. So we're going to sow this. We're going to bring it to the divine exchange table, just like foreign currency. If I had, um, you know, currency from another country, I can't spend it in Australia unless I take it to a, a exchange place. And the exchange rate of heaven is you bring your pain, your shame, your ashes, and he gives you beauty instead of ashes. He gives you double recompense for your former pain, shame, and disgrace. So the exchange rate's incredible. So we brought this embarrassment, this this disgrace on the internet, and we sowed it. We said, okay, God, this has been disgrace, dishonor, in the media, we're sowing it for double favor in the media. We're, we're sowing this, Lord God, knowing that you make all things work for good. You said double for our trouble. So we're, so we're bringing it to the divine exchange table in faith. And then began to imagine what's it going to look like to have extreme favor in the media, extreme favor on the internet. Well, you know, today we're on television in 200 countries around the world. I've got glorious favor over 2 million people following us on social media. And the favor of God is, is truly amazing to me. And I, I, I look at it and I say, thank you, Lord. What the enemy means for evil, God intends for our good. So I, we've been very careful ever since then to really intentionally sow every negative thing that the enemy tries to throw at us and intentionally sow it and then imagine what it's going to look like and thank him for it, declare it, decree it and watch him bring it to pass. 
And in, uh, you, you had referenced this a little bit earlier in terms of uh, waging war with the promises that we read in the word and the promises that God's given us um, at, at a real like practical level. What does that look like to do that day in and day out? Mm. Well, when, he, when we, we grab a hold of you said, Lord, you said that you're going to make this work for my good. So actually picking it up and, and speaking it back to him. So, for example, um, we had another situation where um, someone took a dislike to me and so therefore they then took a dislike to my husband and they were going after him and trying to discredit him. And they, they even wrote to the embassy where, where Tom is the Finnish consul um, and trying to discredit him. And so we sowed it, Father, in, in faith, Lord, we sow this and, and this dishonor. And instead of defending ourselves, we trust you, God, that you'll do what your word says, that double for our troubles, that we sowed it in faith, thanking what's it going to look like to have favor, double favor with the embassy. Well, that year um, they decided to give him a knighthood for his service. So, I mean, just extreme. God is so extreme in his goodness. When, when God said, hey, stadiums are opening to you, in, we, uh, Cindy Jacobs prophesied that in 2011, I just began to declare it. I mean, Thank you, Father. You said, this is a promise from me. You said stadiums are opening to me. You said stadiums are opening to me. So I thank you for that. I thank you that, uh, you know, the fireballs are going to go out of the crowds. People are going to get saved and healed and delivered and the, and I began to imagine it. I began to daydream what it's going to look like. I began to speak it out, calling those things that be not as though they are. Thank you, Lord. Stadiums are opening to me. And today they are, which is just incredible. And um, being invited to speak in the stadiums and, and watching the Lord do exactly what he promised to do. But that I do believe that when these words come, we are responsible to steward them, to receive it with faith. Blessed is she who has believed, but there will be a fulfillment of these things promised to her. But then also speaking it out, calling those things that be not as though they are, and then intentionally um, walking around in the dream, in your sanctified imagination, seeing it because out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth will speak. You'll speak what you are seeing in faith. And, uh, and I believe that as we do that, we're actioning and, um, you know, we're, we're causing what is already being decreed in heaven to be established in earth, on earth as it is in heaven. We've been given the keys. So as we open our mouth, we get to release on earth what has already been decreed as the will of God through the prophetic. Well, uh, before we got into the interview, you were both encouraging and challenging me to dream some God-sized dreams uh, around some of the media uh, work that I'm pursuing this year. And, and I feel like when we see some of those God-sized dreams actually take shape and manifest, in hindsight, we look back and have, we can have bigger faith for what's down the road. But for the person who's like, like we're, we're afraid to take that step because, you know, like, is God really that good? We kind of, we want to question it because we've maybe never stepped into that or, you know, we're still carrying a burden of, of shame or something that, that's holding us down. How do, you know, if, if we're at the early stages of beginning to dream those God-sized dreams, how do we move past those initial hindrances or things that kind of weigh us down? Because again, once you see some of that manifest, your faith grows along the journey. But starting out, how do we get past those initial roadblocks? Yeah, well, I mean, you saw, we can see that in the children of Israel when they, uh, they were all given the same prophetic promise, unqualified prophetic promise that uh, they'll come into their land flowing with milk and honey. But only two actually inherited that promise because only two uh, had faith and patience. The others said, we're as grasshoppers in our own side and so we were in theirs. And so I think there has to be a mindset shift um, in, our, in our thinking. We need to start thinking like God thinks. We need to start by faith believing that God is better than we feel like we deserve, receiving his grace by faith, and believing that he has made us righteous and clean, that we are forgiven, that as we've confessed our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And therefore, our hearts don't condemn us. Whatever we ask, we can receive. Praise God, even if our hearts condemn us, he's greater than our hearts, it tells us in First John 3. But I believe it begins with us actually believing what he says about us 
so that we can then come into agreement to see his uh, plans manifest. And I think the other thing is false humility can sometimes be a big roadblock as well. We think, oh, you know, I don't want to be like, I don't want to be anyone thinking I'm thinking too much of myself. But the reality is if you are, if you're a believer, it's no longer you who lives, but Christ who lives in you. And Christ in you is not dreaming of having a little life or surviving. Christ in you is dreaming of doing the things that he wants to do. And it is glory covering the earth as the water covers the sea. And so I believe as we we lay down that discomfort or the, the fear of what are people going to think and realize that, reckon ourselves dead indeed to sin a life to God in Christ, crucified with him, then we can say, Lord, Show me the desires of your heart, what you want to do in and through me, and then help me to partner with you in faith uh, to believe it because it's not about us. It's about him. Well, I think sometimes staying in that place or operating from that place of false humility is an excuse for us to stay an orphan and just kind of, we're not stepped in, we haven't, we're refusing to step into that fullness of our sonship and daughtership, we, you know, because we're more comfortable uh, as that orphan, but man, when we can lose that false humility and really step into the fullness of who we are designed to be, uh, I feel like that's where the shackles come off and, and we can really Absolutely. start to move forward. Um, uh, in terms of, you have a chapter, a chapter, uh, on making room for God's glory in, 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 I don't know how I, I want to say this, but in terms of like being willing to, to turn aside or go where we, we need to go, I feel like we can get, we can get on lots of good paths where good things are happening, but sometimes the path to where God is moving or wants us to move. It's not necessarily the path we're on, or we need to pause and wait and be patient. Um, you know, cause there's other, other pressures to keep going in a direction or keep pursuing something. Um, how do we make room for God's glory to show up, uh, in the place we are in the place we're going? Cause it isn't always the path we're on or what we're expecting. Mm. No, God wants to fill us as flexible wineskins. And, and that means being willing to say, what, what do you want to do? Holy Spirit, speak to me, show me. And when he drops God ideas, you can, you can feel it. It's on the inside. Wow, I'm excited about this idea. It's a God idea. And that happens as we spend time with him and, and worship him and enjoy his presence. As you delight yourself in the Lord, he gives you the desires of your heart. That is, I believe, as you're delighting yourself in him, He'll drop these ideas that'll, wow, that's a God idea. And um, so I truly believe that as we, we abandon ourselves to the, the one pursuit of drinking deeply from the river of his pleasure, of delighting ourselves in him, as we enjoy him there, um, he drops in those desires of our heart and gives us the faith by his love to begin to pick it up and say, all right, where's the Lord God of Elijah? And begin to step out. I believe that the children of God, the people of God are about to arise and shine like never before in a holy boldness and a holy confidence if they will avoid the distractions that the enemy is trying to wave at them, not get our eyes on, you know, all the drama of the world around us, but if we will set our minds on things above, if we will um, give ourselves to Christ and him crucified and pursuing the, the joy of his presence, then I believe he's going to accelerate us in his plans and his purposes. And, and we really are at a, a pivot point right now where we have to make a choice. Will we have dove's eyes? or you know, And doves have no peripheral vision. They can only see what they're looking at. And the beloved keeps trying to tell the bride all the time in Song of Songs, beloved, you have dove's eyes. And we need to agree with God and say, yes, I've got dove's eyes. I, I only see what I'm looking at and I'm going to look at him. I'm going to look at what he's saying and what he's doing. I'm going to declare what he's doing. I'm going to feed on what he's doing because out of what I'm looking at is what my mouth will speak. And I want my life to be devoted to him. And as you do that, he, he'll accelerate you. Ex extraordinarily. So I think it's really important. It's almost a warning, I think, um, not to not to get swept away with all the drama that is available to be get, get swept away with, but instead to look at him and see what he's doing. 
Yeah, it is very easy to get distracted by uh, the news, social media, mm -hmm. entertainment. Mm -hmm. uh, there's 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 plenty of things to uh, kind of uh, move our dove's eyes, so to speak, somewhere else and kind of get off the path, off off the vision that we're supposed to have. Uh, in, in terms of kind of the, if you want to say the, the reader's journey with the book, they spend the time, they get to that last page. Like, like what's the takeaway? How do you hope you've impacted or shifted every person who encounters this message? Kind of that, that promise on the other side of their journey. What does that look like? You know, I really believe that God's heart for us is to, to be um, aware of and partnering with Jesus, our Redeemer. He wants to redeem every area of our life. And uh, we're not called to be victims. He's called us as overcomers. And I believe the overcoming life is a life of faith that trusts him, that knows him, that, that is intimately connected to him, and that they would then, you know, not waste a drop of suffering, but that they would recognize, yes, in this world, we do have trouble. There is pain, there is suffering, but we can bring all of it to him for his redemption, to cause him to work it for good. Whatever that looks like, he has a plan to cause it to work for good. And I believe that as we partner in faith with this, the enemy is going to be annoyed that he ever messed with us because of the people who learn how to take what he meant for evil and by faith exchange it for the good that god has for them and catherine before we wrap up i'd love for you to take a few moments uh to pray for the audience bless the audience however you feel led mm. father i thank you for our former shame pain and disgrace you delight to give us double for our trouble father i thank you holy spirit that you know, you're calling us, return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. But this day I will return double to you. Lord, I'm asking, Holy Spirit, that you would equip them, help them to recognize that there is hope. Lord, to make the choice to pivot to hope because there is no, there is no joy in despair. Lord, I'm asking, Spirit of God, that you would release hope in the hearts of every hearer right now, that you would help them to recognize, hey, I've got some foreign currency I can exchange in faith, that you would lead them and help them. Lord, that your name would be glorified. Father, I thank you that you know the plans you have for them, plans to prosper them, not to harm them, plans to give them hope and a future, plans to cause everything that the enemy has meant for their evil to turn around for their good. Lord, I bless them. Lord, I release an impartation for faith and freedom in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for that, Catherine. And for the listeners and viewers who'd like to connect with you, check out your ministry, TV show, all your books, all the things, where do we discover you on the web? CatherineRuinala.com. They can find me there, Facebook, um, also Instagram or YouTube. Every week we are um, uh, sharing the, the programs. Also, GloryCityChurch.com.au. But CatherineRuinala.com or my Catherine Renala, um Facebook page, you'll discover lots and lots of content, with lots and lots of teaching. And like we do with every episode, we'll make it easy. We'll have links to Catherine's websites, uh, places you can buy the book, all the things. It'll be linked up and you can just click on through. It's time to bring this episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show to a close. Many thanks for being a part of my conversation with Catherine Ronala. Once again, our book today was Double for Your Trouble, Let God Turn Your Mess into a Miracle. And Catherine, I want to say thank you so much for sharing with us today. It's been an honor and a pleasure to have you back on the show. It was so wonderful, Sean. Thank you very much.